Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart one of these multi CD players. Found it on garbage day, unfortunately it doesn't work. And the nice thing about one of these is I can bring it in as is to a scrapyard and get electronic price. It's about five cents a pound. This weighs about nine pounds. However, I'm going to make more money if I take the time to separate the material. It's very easy to do. There is the tin around the outer coating, which is actually going for about 10 to 13 cents a pound. There's some copper inside, there's some brass. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take it apart, show you how to identify the material, how to separate it properly, and more importantly, how to maximize your profit. So here we go. For the sake of this video and the sake of time, I have already removed the outer screws as well as some of the inner screws. And as you can see, I just store them up on a magnet. These screws I will put into a container. Usually the container, once it's full, is about 10 pounds and that will go into my steel pile, which is great. As I said, steel right now and tin are at an all time high price. So it's great to get that material. I've already, as I said, because I've removed the screws, this is the top and sides as well as the back. If I put a magnet to these, as you can see, they are magnetic. And someone asked me a great question about the difference at a scrapyard between tin and shred and steel. This would be classified as tin and shred. If it was a quarter inch and thicker, that is where you get into steel. Steel pertains a lot to structural beams. Uh, someone asked about bed rails. Bed rails, because of their thickness, they would be classified as steel. But this, as I said, is very thin. It is going to go into tin shred and tin shred is about a couple dollars cheaper a ton than steel so not much more but as I said tin shred steel is the best I've ever seen it uh, as well, since I've been started scrapping it's about $259 a ton in Canada right now so about depending on your scrap yard about 11 to 13 cents so that is great and as you can see I can easily compact this I can get a lot in my vehicle easy to build up weight so that is awesome with that as well the bottom is also if I put a magnet to it it sticks so this too is going to be tin shred the face plate here unfortunately is plastic I can't do anything with this other than throw it into the landfill um, some municipalities will take this so it depends on your municipality there are some circuit boards in here and I've already removed one. This is the one that uh, control has the buttons on it. And these buttons do have a small amount of silver in them. I don't take the time to actually open those up because it's very, very tiny. Um, but scrap yards will accept e-waste as well, circuit boards. And it depends on your scrap yard. Circuit boards can be classified as low grade, medium grade, high grade, high grade, it depends on how much precious metals you have in order for it to be determined what grade it is. Unfortunately, in my scrapyard area, they only take one price. All of our circuit boards, doesn't matter what's on them, will be given at one grade and it's about five cents a pound. So something like this, I will just leave as is. I will throw it into my e-waste pile. An example of a high grade, this comes out of a computer. You can see there are some gold fingers on their ends. This is just gold plated, but it's still gold. If you have a scrap yard that gives the three different grades, this will be classified as high grade because of the gold. Um, some options as well. There are online stores that will buy circuit boards. Boardsource.com is a, a, a site uh, in the States that will buy them. Some people will buy circuit boards online. So that's an option as well. Um, refurbishing commute computers or electronics. So it's entirely up to you. But for me, the nice thing is, is I will save the gold. I cut off the gold. I will store it up and, and hopefully in the future I will refine it. But the rest of these circuit boards, once I cut them, I will actually just bring them into the scrapyard and get the e-waste five cents a pound for it. So it's better than nothing and it's definitely better than going through the landfill. Here is a couple other smaller pieces of steel and it all adds up. On the bottom, there are a couple more circuit boards. There is a little bit of plastic in here, the turntable. This is gonna go, I love this, it actually 
almost looks like a Frisbee. Unfortunately, this is plastic. It's going to go into landfill too. Um, I would love to be able to use this for some type of uh, activity, but um, unfortunately, <laughs> I can't. There is, as you can see inside of here, a transformer, as well as a small copper bearing motor there. These copper bearing motors do have copper in them. I will not open them up and take the copper out of them. I will leave them as is. And copper bearing motors right now at a scrapyard are its own category. They are about 10 to 15 cents a pound. They've gone up a little bit because of the current copper prices have gone up. So I do make sure that I store those up. As well as transformers. There is a category for transformers at a scrapyard. Again, they also go for 10 to 15 cents. However, this transformer is worth taking apart. There is a nice hunk of copper inside. It's very easy to get out. So I'm gonna do that right now. The copper in there would be number two copper, which is currently going for $4.68 a pound. And what I do with that copper is I will put it into a giant bag and it adds up very quickly. So I'm gonna tackle that right now. Just gonna pull the plastic off first. And release it. There's just a couple screws on the bottom. I'm just gonna get, as well, I also had the power cord. The power cord, these in scrapyards in Canada, there are two categories for power cords. You have 40% copper recovery and 60% copper recovery. If I take this up to the camera, you can see there are two individual copper strands that have one layer of coating around each. This would be classified, therefore, as 60% copper recovery. There is more copper to plastic ratio, and currently 60% copper recovery is going for $2.03 Canadian right now. If I cut this and there were two strands that had individual coating as well as an outer coating around both of them, that would be less copper, more plastic, and would be 40% copper recovery which would give me currently $1.23 a pound. So a good example of 40% copper recovery would be your microwave cords, your vacuum cleaner cords, um, and you know the double coated layered wires. So again, this is 60%. So this is not a pound, but like I said, I store them up into a bag. I definitely wanna keep them separated because we're talking 80 cents different a pound. I do also, as you can see, have two uh, coated brass prongs on here. Some people leave them on for the weight. I actually pull these off and I will put them into my brass. Brass currently right now is going for $2.85 a pound. And I, I really haven't seen a huge difference in price difference, but like I said, I enjoy separating it and I store up all my brass. And once I have a huge load, I will bring it in. But again, it's entirely up to you. So a nice power cord. There are also some lower grade or uh, these are also 60% copper recovery wires. Even though they are very small, they all add up. So you definitely want to get those. Here is an additional part to that wire. So you don't want to miss anything. And the nice thing is it all goes and all adds up into your pile. So I'm gonna just tackle right now, get that transformer. There is one or two screws that I have to get. And some people do use a drill to speed up the process. I actually find this very therapeutic uh, and, uh, you know, nice to just get moving. But uh, again, there are not very many screws on here. So there it is. There's my circuit board. Again, this circuit board, there is a little bit on here. This would be an aluminum heat sink, so that's going to go into my aluminum. I'm looking right now if there's any crystal oscillators. No. This ribbon is if I can see it. Um, I also throw these into my, uh, this would be 40% copper recovery. I do believe there are little fingers on there. I still think that they're silver. Um, people say that they're not, but just as an example, a comparison, I've argued the fact that this came out of a TV. Notice the difference. These are actually gold plated fingers. So same type of, um, wire or ticker tape, whatever you want to call this. Um, so my argument is if these are gold, why can't these be sil silver? I have yet to experiment on it yet, but I have different people saying that it's not. Um, if you know the answer, please comment down below, but I do save these. I will cut the ends off. And as I said, for me, because I do not have 
uh, board source or anything around here for now. I am saving up the gold. And as I said, I will save this top part into a small vial for silver. If I figure out that it is silver, then it's great. If not, well, then it's, uh, you know, just uh, took me two seconds to take it apart. But again, there is another piece of um, wire as well as another one here. So the transformer, I'm just gonna knock this off of here. I also wanna make sure I put safety glasses on, but I do break it apart. And it is welded on here. So I want to just break this off of my circuit board first so I can have access to it. Very easy to do. And it doesn't matter if the, these circuit boards are broken. When I bring them into the scrapyard, they are mangled and torn because I also take off the copper from there. I will take off anything of value because, as I said, for five cents a pound, I'm gonna make more money from the copper spools that I find on these transformers. So, definitely worth my time, as well as the aluminum heat sink. So, just trying to clear this out. Now, there are a couple ways to get this. This is, as I said, welded on here. So. I'm gonna speed up the process. I'm just gonna take an angle grinder and actually just grind off that weld on that side and that side. So then I can open this up. So I'm gonna just put it in my vise right now. I uh, put it in my vise because like I said, I don't want to be handling it if I don't have to. I wanna make sure that I'm still safe. I do wanna make sure I also put on gloves just to protect myself. I always have my safety glasses on. Another option you could do if you really wanted to, you could use a hammer or um, a chisel to break that weld. It is easy, but I just like to speed up the process and then save your ears from the banging. Now, next thing all I'm going to do, as you can see, it just popped off. There you go. So this is also going to go into my tin shred. It is going to be a little bit warm. And again, even though it looks thick like that, someone might say it could be in your steel. Unfortunately, these are all individual plates that are put together. So this would actually still go into my tin. But nevertheless, it uh, all adds up. Now all I'm gonna do is actually just punch this out with a hammer. There you go. So another nice piece of tin shred. And again, this on its own weighs about a pound and a half. But again, so a pound and a half, we're talking 10 cents a pound. But as you can see inside of here, there is some really nice copper. So I'm just gonna pop that out, use a hammer. Just smash it out. Look how nice that is. Pulling that out right there. So this is, just wanna make sure, in order to get this out, I wanna cut the little corner off there, hit it off. So it slides off. And it just folds off, look at that. And there'll be two, two layers of copper in here. Okay, so there's the first one. And before someone says this could be bare bright, yes, it is very shiny, it looks beautiful. However, bare bright only pertain, it pertains to wire, but the wire, in order for it to be classified as bare bright, it has to be thicker than 16 gauge, which is the thickness of the lead of a pencil. And unfortunately, this is not the thickness of the lead of a pencil, but again, it is still gonna go for number two copper wire, which is currently going for $4.68 a pound. There are always two layers inside of these. There's a little bit of tape that I'm just gonna get off, um, but very easy to take out and a great source of copper. So you got your tape, take that off. Because it's number two copper, I don't have to actually be too worried about the tape cover on here, but I'm just taking it off so it's a visual effect for you, so you can see it all. And I wanna make sure that I get it all 
but a very nice spool of number two copper. And as I said, it might not look like a lot, but this is a bag of my motor copper and transformers. This bag weighs 26 pounds. So 26 pounds times $4.68, I'm doing pretty good just by wire from motors and transformers and all little circuit boards. So that is definitely a great way to maximize your profit, taking those transformers. And I would only recommend taking transformers if you can see the copper wire inside of them. Some of them, for example, little thin ones that you have, for example, something like this. There is a lot of tape on that, very little copper recovery. So something like this, I would not take apart, but definitely the steel outer cased ones, definitely worth your time taking the copper out of them. The rest of this, there is a little bit of metal on here. This is your um, plate that, uh, or the photo eye that moves up and down, that tracks the CD. Um, there is, as I said, a small little steel in there. I am gonna get the photo eye does have a little bit of copper. Uh, I'm just gonna break it out. As you can see there, this photo eye will go up and down. This will go into my steel pile. There is, I'm looking, a little circuit board on there. A couple small inside here, little copper bearing motors that will just be thrown into my copper bearing motor pile along with the other one. And once I remove all the screws, the rest of this outer casing is going to be plastic and garbage. But again, very easy to take apart, very easy way to maximize your profit. I had the copper, the outer, uh, appliance wire, some inner appliance wire that was my 60% copper recovery, a lot of tin shred, so easy to do, took me a couple minutes to do. Hopefully that answered some questions. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Tin Man out.